Hi guys and welcome to another pick a card reading. Today's reading is going to be where do you need to put your attention and where do you need to put your focus. So yeah, hopefully it'll just bring a bit of clarity to the madness that is life and um, yeah, and just give you a little bit of insight into, you know, focusing on one thing at once. So we've got three powers to choose from. We have rainbow, sapphire and gold. So I'm just going to give you a minute to tune in and pick which one most resonates with you. You might be drawn to more than one, that's okay. Just bear in mind that it's general though and it won't resonate for everyone. Okay, so if you need more time, just pause the video and I'm gonna start with rainbow. So if you chose rainbow, okay. So what do you need to focus on? Primarily right now, I think you need to focus on your beliefs, which might not be what you were expecting. <laughs> um, your reading is really centered about what you believe in and what you believe to be true. And you, what you might be finding right now is that you don't really know what you believe or you don't really know for certain what's for you, what isn't for you. You might, you might have been doing a lot of research recently on lots of different things, or you might have been um, just curious about different perspectives and listening to different perspectives. Um, and you may just not be as certain right now as to where you stand. And I think that that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But they want you to get clear I think what they want you to do right now is focus on the fact that you, it may be time for you to open up your mind a little bit and broaden your horizons because what may be happening or has happened in the recent past is that you have been introduced to some um, new perspectives that at times you may have fought against because it goes against whatever you've been brought up believing. And this doesn't just have to be spiritual and religious beliefs. This can just be to do with your belief system, right? And how you've lived your life up to this point. Um, so I think what's going on is they want you to um, be excited about learning new ideas, new perspectives, new beliefs, and understand that you're only really restricting yourself if you you know, if you stubbornly shut out things that you immediately reject without giving a chance to, right? It's almost like what they want you to focus on right now is enjoying learning about maybe new cultures or enjoy learning about, you know, different ways that people look at the world and, and see what impact that has on you and see it as more of an experience than something that challenges what you already believe to be true. Or, you know, it may be that you felt a little bit threatened by other people's beliefs on your own. And they want you to take on a new approach and see it as just a learning experience of getting to know different ways that people live their lives and different ways people go about things rather than you know immediately make that decision that it's not for you or that you completely you know, disagree with that perspective, rather open up your mind and try and look at things from all angles. And it could be a case that you need to look at other people's perspectives a little bit more as well. They may be encouraging you to see things from other people's points of view to help you understand, to help you relate, to help you empathize. Um, you do have the sun and you have bound. This is about breaking free, I feel. They want you to focus on breaking free of restrictions and breaking free of, for me, it's limited beliefs and limited ideas that you may have, it may not have come from you. You may have been brought up in an environment where people uh, very rigidly stuck to what they believe in and that rubbed off on you in some kind of a way. And you're now in a position in your life where you may be exploring different ways of looking at the world and it is challenging your old belief systems, which may be quite difficult because no matter who you are or what your belief system is, 
you know, you can become quite protective on what you've known up to this point. And so they're asking you to try and release that, that guardedness that you might have against differing opinions and differing points of view and allow these new ideas to come in for you, to help you explore a new reality. Because I think the reason why this is important for you and why they want you to put your energy into this is because it's gonna, it, it's not just gonna broaden your horizons in terms of your perspectives, it's gonna broaden your horizons in terms of your opportunities and what you attract into your life if you can do this. We've got the Hierophant with Ascending. Some of you could be currently going through a spiritual awakening or you um, are going through another one, right? And again, this is really challenging the old for you. This is really challenging what you've known up to this point and that can be quite difficult and it can make us quite resistant. I think that's the word is resistant to the change or resistant to those new beliefs and perspectives and they're asking you to do your best in to you know remain open-minded because that's what you're going to have to be I think um at this point in your life is open-minded to what you hear what you read what you listen to who you listen to you know and it's not about making a judgment either way I don't think I think it's more for you at this point in time it's more just you listening and, you know, processing someone else's point of view and, you know, not making a decision, but just seeing it as it is, learning about it, being curious about it, rather than, you know, making a judgment call that that is not true or that's not for me or this fights against my own belief system, therefore I reject it, you know, more so just being open and being almost letting it filter through, you know? Um, I feel like that's what you need to do right now. And why? Because it's gonna help you with your growth. It's gonna help you move forward in your life towards more positive experiences. It's gonna help you look at the experiences that you have in your life in a new way, in a way that doesn't feel so restrictive, in a way that doesn't feel so heavy and burdensome and challenging. I think it's gonna help you look at, it's gonna help you understand why certain experiences happen to you, for you, you know, because of you, you know, it's it's gonna help you understand it all. And it's gonna just, I think it's gonna allow you to become a bit more optimistic about your future prospects and about where you're going in your life. Yeah, because the Hierophant here is a teacher a lot of the time. The Hierophant is a bit of a teacher. And it may be a case that right now you are the student and you're learning these new perspectives and these new ideas. And, you know, it could be that you're just experiencing a lot of this right now where things are just kind of falling on your path. You know, it might be that you randomly notice a book that you've never noticed before and it's got a strange title that doesn't really sit well with you, but you're curious about it anyway and you're gonna open it up and see what it's about. Or it may be a, a YouTube video, for example, that you, it has a specific title that just stands out to you, but it's not something you would normally watch. And as you're listening to it, you're like, mm, I'm not really sure I can really get on board with this. But you're being asked to just give things a chance, give things a chance, because what you may find is that this information, this new insight, these new perspectives are gonna help you later on when you take on some kind of teacher role, you know, when you take on, when you become the teacher after being the student. So the information that you learn now, you don't have to make a decision about whether or not you agree with it. It's just about opening um, opening up your mind and allowing the information to feed through you so that later on you have that knowledge there, you have that wisdom there, you've explored different cultures, you've explored different perspectives and you have a lot to then pull from to give to others in the future. Um, it, it really feels like a bit of a spiritual awakening to me where 
what you once knew is not what you're taking forward with you. And that can feel quite scary and quite terrifying at times because we become used to what we know, right? <laughs> um, you may have been quite a practical person in the past. You may have been someone who always pulled from a practical place, a spade a spade, right? <laughs> you may have always been that type of person. Things are very black and white. There's no gray area. And this is all gray area that you're moving into now. This is all gray area and that might be a bit, I don't like it because I can't put that in box A or box B and I'm, I'm not comfortable with that because that's how I function and that's how I roll. Um, but this won't allow you to do that. This is asking you to stay open and not feel like you have to have the need to put things in boxes, to just allow them to be what they want to be and allow yourself to just almost leave these beliefs and these belief systems open-ended. You know, allow transformation, allow change, be adaptable. I think they want you to be adaptable um, because ultimately it's gonna benefit you later on because I think that something that you may be destined for if it's not already the case is you're meant to be in a bit of a leadership position. You're meant to be someone that people turn to perhaps for advice or wise counsel or something along them lines and that can come in many forms but you may you know you you may be here to do that and you can only do that if you've pulled from many sources or if you have done your research if you have looked around if you've tested the waters but done it in a way where you haven't made judgment about it where you haven't decided this is true, this is not true, but just instead left it open and just seen that there may be bits of truth to everything and that there's things to be gained from every perspective as well. And so you've got buffalo, which always comes out, um, it does actually always come out, but it comes out in situations like this where there is a bit of a a need to balance out the 3D and the 5D energies, you know? A need to use both, a need to pull from both, a need to see that the practical side of life is needed, but also the spiritual side of life is needed and both, when they work together, thrive, right? It's when we're too heavily in one over the other that things are thrown off balance a little bit. So this is really you exploring a new side of yourself you know it may be that if you've been heavily influenced in the spiritual side of life it may be that now you're being uh, pulled back down again almost like you not in a bad way but in a, a grounded kind of way that you're being um, asked to pull that wisdom and that knowledge but bring it back down to earth right <laughs> and, um, and build something physical with it but I think that the real advice here is to stay open-minded, to explore, to, to explore perspectives, ideas, to do the research, to, and not in a way where it's like, well, I've done my research and I know I'm, what I'm talking about, <laughs> because no one knows what they're talking about. <laughs> and that's when the ego goes, um, excuse me, <laughs> but it's true. No one knows what they're talking about. It's a case of needing to do the research and explore ideas and being open to what fits you, you know, and what suits you and what feels right to you. And understanding that it's okay that if certain belief systems of yours that you've had for a long period of time end up falling away as a result of the research that you do, you know, it's okay. It's okay to make room for new perspectives and get rid of old ones. It's okay to do that. And, you know, to be honest, we're not really meant to have the same or keep the same perspectives throughout an entire lifetime. You know, we're meant to change. We're meant to correct ourselves. We're meant to, um, you know, change our minds. We're meant to do these things. It's all part of learning. And I think you're very much in a period of time in your life where you're learning and you're growing. But I think it would go a lot easier for you if you were if you remain open and you um, you pull from different resources and you pull from different places 
and use that to help you with your future prospects as you go forward because I think at some point in time you're going to take on a bit of a leadership role or a teacher role for others. Other people will come to you because of the knowledge that you hold and the wisdom that you hold and it will be valuable to them but that comes from the research that you do now, right? And your open-mindedness and your ability to look at things from all perspectives and all angles is what's re really going to help you going forward. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there, guys. But I'm going to move on to Sapphire. Okay. Sapphire. So, <laughs> yours is interesting. I say that in every reading. I know, I'm a broken record. Um, so the first thing, okay, so I'm just going to point this out, first of all, is that this colour is actually in itself significant for you, I feel. So you might be a fan of blue, or you, there's just something about that colour that's very prominent in your life. Um, sapphire, right, the first thing that popped into my head was the sapphire, which I think it was a sapphire, correct me if I'm wrong, from the film Titanic. That was the first thing that popped into my head with this card, right? And it's like a heart-shaped necklace that she wears, right, in the film. And I googled it before I started the reading because I wanted to see if there was any significance that I could pull from that because there must have been a reason why it popped into my head. And the necklace in the film was apparently called the heart of the ocean. So this is to do with your heart space because what I feel you need to focus on right now is following your heart. That's what I think this comes down to, is following your heart. I think that you have been maybe, maybe doing things the practical way, maybe following or leading your life through your mind, with your head, trying to make decisions that make sense rather than decisions that give you what it is that you want or that fulfill you because they don't always match up and they don't always align, right? So I feel like what you need to focus on is learning how to tap into your heart space more and listening to it and trusting it. You may not trust your own heart. You may not trust your own emotions or your emotional space. You may feel like it's misled you in the past and, and so you shut it down a long time ago because you didn't you didn't feel like it was working well with you. You don't feel like it was pushing you in the right direction or you felt like it gave you some painful experiences. And so you stopped trusting it and instead you went with your head. And I feel like what's happened as a result of that is that you've ended up um, living your life in a way that may at times be grounded, stable. It may function, it may have quite a good routine going but it's not fulfilling and it doesn't align with who you are and it doesn't, um, it's, it, okay, this is it. It's not a good representation of who you are as a person because the phrase that popped into my head was untapped potential. You have a lot of it. <laughs> you have a lot of it. There's a lot going on inside of you that no one knows and that no one sees or not many people see unless they really know you or really understand you, right? So I feel like they're trying to get you to follow your heart because that's what's going to um, allow you to allow you a bit more happiness into your life first and foremost, but also it's going to allow you to shine in a way that you maybe haven't given yourself chance to in the past because you were leading with your head. So you've got the eight of wands and big dreams, right? This this is amazing to me, right? In terms of what you need to focus on. So this eight of wands is very much a card of action. It's like, it's not a card of planning. It's not a card of thinking. It's not a card of sitting back and waiting. This is a card of making a move taking action, taking initiative, making things happen. They're all pointing in the same direction, right? So it's like, eyes on the prize, I know where my target is, I'm going for it. It's that type of energy. It's also Sagittarius, right? Very much so in this deck, which to come out with big dreams, I mean, that's, that's that energy, right? That's the energy of 
Sagittarius, which is adventure. It's going after your goals. It's going after your dreams. It's making your dreams a reality. And I've, it's action, right? So I feel like that's what you need to focus on is that energy because you've been limiting yourself. I think that you've been holding yourself back. And again, it's like, there's so much within you. There's so much going on within you. And I feel like it, it does link to your emotional space as well. So your emotions may be driving you a bit mad at the minute <laughs> as well, or your heart space may be driving you a bit mad. And part of the reason for that is because it's, it's being ignored. And so it's kicking up a fuss, right? And it's saying, listen to me. Like I'm trying to tell you what we want here and you're not working with me, right? <laughs> So that's what I feel like is going on with you right now. And so the advice is to throw caution to the wind. This isn't a time for you in your life to play it safe, right? This is not, obviously there are limitations to that. I'm not saying do something stupid, but in terms of going after your dreams and going after what you want and what your heart is telling you in particular, whatever your heart is telling you that you want, you need to take action towards that because I feel like it's not going away. <laughs> it's not going away. It's just going to get louder. You've got oyster here. Look at the shine around the oyster. That's your heart space. And just, you, you've kind of, you've shut it off. You know, you've put it, you've locked it away in a safe and it's screaming. <laughs> your heart is screaming at you right now. And it's not gonna stop. It's not gonna quieten itself down. It's not gonna go away because it's demanding you to listen to it. It's saying to you, look, you know what we want. You know what's good for us. You know who we are. And you're not acting in alignment with that. Um, and so it's quite upset. <laughs> it's quite upset. So some of you, may have experienced some pain in the heart space or you may have experienced some just a lot of emotion and it's because there's a lot that you're not allowing yourself to have there's a lot that you're not allowing yourself to experience and you're telling yourself I think that it's maybe too risky that you don't deserve it that you're not good enough that that um maybe it's just a pipe dream right whatever this is and it can again this can be many different things whatever it is that you're telling yourself it, it's not true it's not true and your heart's trying to tell you that but I think because you feel or you have felt left uh what was I going to say then left I meant to say let down but I said left so some of you feel left behind I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that one. Take it as it resonates. Let down. That's what I was going to say. You felt let down by your heart space because of where it's led you in the past. Um, and now you don't trust it or you haven't been trusting it and you don't listen to it. You push it to the side. You ignore it. You try and pretend that it's not happening, that it's not there. Um, and you, you, know, you, you just trust your head instead. But that's not actually led you to what you want and it's not um again it's not been in alignment with how you feel and um what fulfills you on an emotional level so why is it important that you focus on this right now well you've got the magician and you've got pause <laughs> yeah so the magician this is the thing right these two cards are really the strong manifestation and en energies so you might be quite a good manifester but it's like you've not been using your own skills. You've not been using your abilities to manifest your dreams. You've not been tapping into that side of yourself for a while. Um, um, but the magician, right? The magician is a good manifester. However, I sometimes look at him and I'm like, I'm like, you have all these tools. You have all these things at your disposal, but all you're kind of doing is just kind of you you keep changing your mind at which approach you're gonna you're gonna use or you keep changing your mind at you know <laughs> at what what it is that you're gonna do about this you know and how you're gonna 
almost like how you're gonna do your trick, you know? It's like you keep changing your mind. So I feel like with the magician showing up in Y, it's because with pause being here, there's been too much deliberating, I think, and debating on what to do and not enough doing it, you know? It's just like, I'm just, I'm gonna take this approach. No, I'm not. I'm gonna take that approach. No, no, that's not a good idea. And just this kind of back and forth, you know, investing in an idea, but then quickly talking yourself out of it. And it keeps you stood still. So this is what they're saying is that it's like you're not moving from the place that you're currently in, because what happens is you're kind of walking around in a circle and it feels like you're moving, but you end up right back where you started because although the ideas are there, and you have a lot of them and I think you have a lot of dreams and you might be very good at imagining you know what you want for your future and imagining how things could be but when it comes to actually you know the follow-through I think that that is something that you might struggle with because of your lack of trust in yourself and your lack of trust in your own instincts and your own intuition and your heart space so the reason why it's important that you focus on strengthening that side of you, that's that side of you that throws caution to the wind and takes action and, you know, trusts in your, your dreams and trusts in what it is that you want emotionally as well as everything else, then... I can't remember how I started that sentence, so <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say then. It just kind of fell out of my head. So maybe this is what happens. Maybe this is one of the things where it's like, um, <laughs> maybe you're kind of like on a train of thought and then suddenly you'll just hit a, a brick wall. Although you'll, you'll, um, you'll just draw a blank, you know, and things will just feel foggy again. So you're kind of on a train of thought and then that's it. You hit a brick wall and that's it. And you have to start again. So maybe this is the problem is that It's actually starting. That's what I think is the problem here. It's starting. I think that there's a lot of kind of walking around in circles and the ideas are there and they're all kind of in your hands and you've got all these tools and you can kind of create what you want out of them. And, you know, you've got lots of different ideas and approaches of how you're gonna go about doing something. But then it's like, as soon as you get round to it, it's like, no, <laughs> you draw a blank and you talk yourself out of it and start all over again. So it's just allowing yourself to be a bit more free with it and um, to not restrict yourself so much. Because again, I feel like the problem is that you're stagnant right now. You're stagnant, you're stuck in place, you're walking in circles, right? And it, rather than moving forward, you know, you're not really moving forward, you're just kind of doing this, you're doing laps and, um, and they want, they just want you to stick to what it is that you want. And the thing is, I think if some of you have been telling yourself, I don't know what I want, I don't think that's true. I don't think that's, I think that's something that you might, or a conclusion that you might come to when really it's fear of trusting your heart space and trusting, you know, what you're capable of, trusting your instincts. So... Yeah, I feel like, um, I feel like it's time for you to make some bold moves and some big moves and to not be quiet about it. I think you've been quiet for too long, actually. I think you've been, um, you've been locked away, you know, for too long. This inner you has been tucked away, um, because it was probably misused or misunderstood or misrepresented somehow in the past and it just taught you to hide that side of yourself away and, and at, at this point now it's just it's become so loud that it could be becoming a bit of a problem for you in your day-to-day -day life because you can't ignore it anymore um, because of how loud it is and it's it's you trying to tell you let's make this move you know let's do this let's take action let's go after what what we both know we want you know and what we both know we're capable of but it's like your 3D self is saying no. 
you know, you might have moments of inspiration or moments where you feel like you can, but then quickly talk yourself out of it. And I'm not sure why, other than fear. That's all. Sorry, it cut me off. Official person, right? I think this is you. I think you've. this is the way you've been presenting yourself to the world. I think this is you. I think this is, you know, putting on your uniform, I think doing, you know, taking care of your responsibilities, doing what's expected of you, you know, going about your, your day to day. But this is just not in alignment with whatever this is. This is something, this is like, this is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what excites me. This is what brings me to life. And then this over here is like, this is what I do every day. This is the reality of my situation right now. This is my, these are my responsibilities. This is what's expected of me, but it's not really what I'm looking for from life, you know? So they want you to take a few risks now and to take a few chances and to stop holding yourself back and limiting yourself because you have so much potential, so much potential and it's just sat there and it's not being used and it's not been said and it's not been spoken and it's not being expressed. And it's like you just need to make a splash in the world now. And a big part of you knows that that's true. For those of you that resonate with this, you know, a big part of you knows that it's time for that because of how uncomfortable you are now living the way you've always lived. Um, but I think, what is holding you back? Because you have the ideas, the dreams, the goals, they're there. I feel like even ideas of approach, of where you're gonna start, I feel like they are there. But I think it's, it's something else. <laughs> You may have a lot of distractions. You may have a lot of distractions. Look at this, you're not expressing yourself. Mute. And then you've got refocus. So, yeah, I think that you, it's like, why do I get the feeling that you're doing everything but the thing you wanna do? <laughs> why do I get that feeling that you're doing everything taking care of everything, but the very thing that you want the most. So it's almost like you're scared to have it. You're scared to have what, you know, what brings you the most fulfillment or um, try for the thing that make that brings you a lot of fulfillment in your life. I think that you are afraid to go for it. You may, again, some of you have a lot of distractions and responsibilities and I get that with official person as well. Yeah, I feel like there's something going on here where you may have a lot going on in your environment and you feel like it's taking a lot of your energy and attention away. But they are very much prompting you to make time for your, your dreams, whatever that means to you. Whatever you've got your eyes set on, you know, I feel like you you are being prompted to take action towards that now because I think that it's just become a bit, I'm hearing unbearable, something's become unbearable. And it might be this idea, this feeling of pretense, you know, and just putting on a show. And again, we all wear masks. I don't think there's one person that can say that they don't at some point, you know, in life. It's just some people make them uh, make them. <laughs> some people make masks. Some people wear them more frequently. Why am I doing that? It's like you're, you might be saying things that you don't want to say or that you don't mean to say. You might just be like letting words fall out of your mouth or you're worried that that's what you're going to do because oh that's mm, it might be that that's what starts to happen if you leave this much longer because it's built up so much that it's just gonna all start falling out of your mouth and not make much sense. <laughs> or maybe that is the fear that if you speak up and you, or you start putting yourself out there more that it's gonna kind of all come tumbling out because it's just been suppressed for so long. Um, <laughs> but I really don't think you have anything to worry about. 
that might be a little bit of pride coming in, you know? Um, yeah, because pride and ego care about the way that we look, you know, and the way that we come across. And so if that's something, that could be something that's holding you back as well. You know, what will people think? How will I come across to those people? You know, will people support my goals and my dreams? And I think this could be the thought process that you go through that holds you back in the end and that takes you back to square one. Yeah, you are definitely, yeah, it's like you're causing yourself unnecessary pain, I think, because we've got numbing and we've got grief. The reason why you're feeling a sense of grief is because you won't allow yourself to have what it is that you want. So it's almost like you're, you're sacrificing, but in an unnecessary way, in a way that you don't have to. It's like, it's like you're trying to talk yourself out of, of what it is that you want. And I'm not sure why you're doing this. I'm not sure if it's circumstantial. I'm not sure if it's like you're trying to just be happy with what you currently have maybe, which is nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's good to show gratitude. It's good to, you know, find the good in what we, what already exists in our life. But it's like the universe is very, very much coming forward and saying to you, but that's not all you were supposed to experience. You know, that's not all you're here to have. And you know that, and that's why you feel uncomfortable because you're not in alignment with what it is that you're here to really do um, or have, you know, and we want you to experience this. So yeah, we're kind of making things a little bit uncomfortable for you right now so that you'll hopefully make these moves and you'll make these changes and you'll, you know, you'll throw caution to the wind and you'll remember that there's really nothing to fear regardless of outcome, that you're always gonna feel more fulfilled having known that you've gone after something that you want than let it pass you by, right? Yeah, this just flung itself out over Oyster. Happy. It's like, what? why suppress what makes you happy? Why lock that away? It's like, why, why not share that? Why not express that? Why not go after that? Why not let yourself have that? It's like you're limiting your own happiness and I'm confused by this. I'm hoping you can understand my predicament right now because that is difficult for me to understand why you would want to sacrifice your own happiness. Um, you've got an inner joy that's not being tapped into, you know, there's like an inner, inner shine. It could be your own light as well. You may not have actually allowed your own light to come out. Um, you may not have tapped into it. But again, I think it's because you just have this fear. You might have a fear of being happy you might have a fear of being happy because if you're happy, then there must be something wrong, right? If you if you have something that's bright and shiny, then it's probably just gonna break. And I think that you have this fear of having good things in your life. It's like you're used to things going in a certain way and whatever this is that you have your mindset on, and well, more than that, your heart's, whatever you're curious about, right? <laughs> whatever you're interested, fascinated and inquisitive about, it's like you're worried that curiosity will kill the cat. <laughs> you're worried that if you follow that curiosity that it's gonna lead, that it's gonna be a trap, right? You have fear, you have fear and you have doubt and it's probably coming from your past. It's probably coming from experiences that were quite painful for you. And I can understand that that would very much restrict you from pursuing other things going forward and that you might be more cautious this time or you might be more protective of yourself this time. But this isn't just protective and cautious. This is complete restriction and limitation. This is I am shutting that down before it has time to evolve, you know? I'm not gonna let this get me it's almost like you might feel like something is going to go sour 
or something's gonna hurt, yeah, something's gonna hurt you. I think that's what you're afraid of. But despite, despite being curious, despite something that makes you happy, despite something that brings light into your life, despite, even if it's just the idea of you doing something that you've always wanted to do, you know, and you're afraid to actually follow through with that because what if it doesn't play out the way you want it to or the way you expect it to? But I think what you have to remember is there's a big difference between intuition and fear. A big difference. You know, with intuition, there's often a sense of calm. There's a sense of calm and peace and, um, and yeah, sometimes excitement and, um, I want to say like a spiritual high. I get that sometimes. Um, but with fear, there's anxiety, right? There's anxiety, there's uh, overthinking, overanalyzing. Um, yeah, it's fear is very uncomfortable physically. Um, so yeah, I just just pay attention to the fact that there is a big difference and you know, have a word with yourself and ask yourself, what am, what am I being led by right now? Am I being led by the desire and the passion for what I want? Or, or am I being led by fear? Because I think fear is really holding you back. And you have a right to go after whatever it is that you want. I think you're having difficulty speaking. Yeah, look at this, lonely. Isolated, alienated, friendless. I think you feel disconnected from your life. I think you feel disconnected from from what you've created. And it's because you're being pushed in a new direction or you're telling yourself you want to go in a new direction, but you've not been listening and you've been trying to make your old circumstances work for you, even though you may have grown and changed and it doesn't fit the same way anymore. Um, and I think that maybe you're looking for people who will understand that. And I feel like, I feel like any time you feel as though people aren't understanding that, just turn to the universe because they see everything, they know everything. You don't even have to say too much, they already know. <laughs> so just ask them for help, you know, ask them for support, ask them for courage. If courage is what you need to make these changes, ask for it, kind of like Wizard of Oz, you know? except rather than dealing with a fake wizard, you're dealing with something very real and very powerful. Um, but yeah, I think you deserve to have what it is that you want. You deserve time to explore your dreams. You have so much potential. You have the courage already. It's there, it just needs to be pulled out of you, you know? It just needs, it needs to be tapped into. Again, you're the magician, right? You're the magician. You already have the tools at your disposal. You just need to see that and recognize that, that you've never been limited, that you've never been without, that you've never been lacking, that you've always been good enough, that you are more than capable. And you just need to see that yourself. You need to see it and you need to understand that your, the dreams that you have, they're very possible and they're very real and you can make them happen. And you deserve the opportunity to try and you don't have to settle, you know, because I feel like some of you have definitely been settling. Okay, we do have loving now as well, which is interesting because that fits in with the Titanic theme, right? Kind of goes along with that storyline. With loving being here, I feel like it's just going after what you love and what, it, you know, what you're passionate about as well and what brings you that sense of peace and joy. And then inspired, yeah. You, whatever brings you to life, whatever just lights that spark and that match and that flame inside of you, you need that. You need to go after that because that's what life is for. It's not for this kind of mundane, I mean, yeah, life is mundane regardless of the life that you live sometimes and that can't always be, um, you can't always escape that. However, when it's always like that, something needs to change. Something needs to, you need to adapt. You need to, I feel like you need to trust yourself. You really need to trust yourself because I feel like you've lost a lot of trust in yourself 
as a result of past decisions that you may have made where maybe you did throw caution to the wind and it didn't exactly go to plan. But I think this feels very different to me. This feels very different to me. And I think that this feels like your heart space is trying to um, reawaken, but you're not letting it. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there because I could go on all day about that one. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna move on to gold. Okay, so if you chose goals, what do you need to focus on right now and why? Okay, so when I saw gold come out, I was like, this is going to be about money. I know it's going to be about money because it's gold. And then lo and behold, your first card out was the 10 of pentacles. So yeah, this is about finances, but not necessarily just finances it's about hobbies creative pursuits it's about um work career it's about you know uh passions in the physical world and i feel like i feel like you need to focus on this because because i think again it's it kind kind of only only a smidge only a smidge it's a little bit like sapphire in the sense that it's it feels like you have untapped potential that you haven't you haven't allowed yourself to pursue you've got maybe an idea particular but in your case a work idea i would say some sort of work idea or career opportunity that you may not have explored yet that could provide you with a lot of abundance or that um, would be very successful for you. But I think there's something about um, work and hobbies and skills, etc. These things right now, I think there's a bigger purpose to them. They want you to focus on these things because of how healing it would be for you. Um, you may have been through the ringer with other areas of your life and I feel like what you need most right now is probably stability and some sort of consistency in your life and so by actually focusing on those areas and exploring new work opportunities or trying new things out some of you may actually start your own business as well um, but regardless of that by focusing on your career and your work opportunities, it's gonna provide you with a lot of stability, abundance, obviously, because with hard work, typically, you know, abundance follows. Um, but a sense of inner peace, I think, and balance that you may not have had for quite some time. Um, and I think self-empowerment as well and self-esteem will be things that improve as a result of you focusing on your work opportunities. Some of you, there's something maybe to do with pregnancy or children as well. Um, maybe, oh yeah, cycles. That's interesting. Okay. So maybe some of you need to focus on children or you need to, if that's something that you want for yourself, you might want to really consider how you're going to make that happen for yourself, right? Depending on your circumstances is going to depend on uh, whether, you know, how, how you go about having children in your life. So I feel like some of you need to focus on that as well because I'm looking at this Ten of Pentacles and there's a there's a little boy at the front of the card. Oh, girl, I don't actually know if it's a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter though. Um, and I feel like, yeah, you you may want a family and you may want family life and you may really need to prioritise this right now or plan it out and think, really come up with some ideas on how you're gonna go about making this a reality for yourself because, um, because of your cycles. I know this is very specific, because of your cycles. Um, yeah. So I feel like that's got something to do with age as well. Maybe for some of you, you know, you've got to think about, you know, if you're a woman, you've got to think about 
if you want pregnancy and you want children through the traditional sense, in the traditional sense, then you need to think about your cycle. You need to think about, um, you know, timing and how much time there is left for you to be able to have that, to not miss out. I feel like they don't want you to miss out on an opportunity that you really want to have in your life. Now, going back to the work opportunity, again, I feel like you have the potential for a lot of success here. If it's not literal birth, I feel like it's the birth of something new, right? A new endeavor, a new career or work opportunity um, that is really, I think it's really gonna give you a boost. I think that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna give you a boost. It's gonna bring you more abundance, make you feel more comfortable um, in your surroundings. I think it's going to, it may be actually the stepping stone for you to have kids, if that's again, something that's on your mind. But I also think that, I think that you, you need healing and this is somehow gonna heal something, could heal something within you that maybe didn't feel good enough or didn't feel worthy. Um, and so I feel like there's an aspect of you that needs to allow yourself to receive abundance. Some of you may not have learned to receive abundance and you may have a tendency to reject it or push it, push it away or repel it in some kind of a way. Um, and so that they're, they're asking you to understand maybe where that comes from, first of all, where that um, feeling of not being worthy or not being good enough or not, um, not being deserving of living an abundant lifestyle, where that might stem from, if that's true for you. And if you can understand it, then you can work your way through it and understand that it's not real, that it's something that you've created for yourself in your life and that it's stemmed from past experiences that don't relate to your experiences today, right? And don't have to remain the same. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's like this, you may have an idea that's a bit of a, um, like a treasure chest, you know, it, it could provide you with treasure. <laughs> which you could take that literally, or you could just see that as as being, um, you know, like when you take on an opportunity or you run with, a, with an idea, it leads to another idea, which leads to another idea, and you're just suddenly in the flow. It could be one of them things as well, where a lot comes from one idea. So we've got metamorphosis. Yeah, it's like the the caterpillar into a butterfly coming out of the cocoon, right? The, the, the need to come out of your shell. It's time for you to maybe stop playing it safe. They might want you to um, put yourself out there a little bit more, put yourself out there into the world a little bit more, show off your skills, your talents. You've probably, I feel like some of you have built up a lot of um, skills already and it they just need to be put to use it's like you've got this like wasted talent going on here which again is sort of similar to sapphire in a sense there's wasted talent because you have a lot of skills already within you that just need to be used and utilized and they're really encouraging you to do that right now and to keep trying you know keep trying to find a way to put them out there into the world keep testing the waters. Now we do have third party here as well, which is interesting. Um, I'm gonna clarify that. I feel, I don't know why, but I'm getting the kind of sense that some of you need to stop comparing yourself to third parties, you know, to outside influences, to other people. You might need to stop comparing yourself as though, you know, you should be like this person, you should be like that person, you should be doing as well as them, you should be doing, you know, everyone is different and everyone's experiences are different and there just isn't any comparison to be had. You know, your journey is your own and it's unique and it's not going to compare to anyone else's and vice versa, right? The moon, you need to pay attention to the moon cycles right now as well. There's something going on with you in moon cycles. I've just seen that. So pay attention to that because I think there might be something that you're missing. We've got release here 
as well. I feel like you need to release an old idea of yourself, an old belief about yourself that is just not working for you anymore. It's not even remotely true. <laughs> I, I kind of get the feeling like your guides are a bit sassy. I feel like they're a bit sassy right now and I feel like the way it's coming through, it's like they're kind of annoyed that you don't see how different you are today to who you were in the past. And that doesn't mean that you were a bad person in the past. It just means that, you know, you've learned and you've grown and you've applied a lot of your lessons already, but you still refuse to see it. And it's almost like they're getting a bit sassy and a bit annoyed with the fact that you don't see how much you are capable of, how much you have to offer, how valuable you are still. They're saying still. You still don't see that, you still don't understand that or recognize that, despite all of our messages, despite all <laughs> despite all the time and effort you've put into yourself and you still don't see how, you know, how it's, where it's gotten you and who, you know, just as a person, let alone anything else. So I think there's something about your guides being a bit sassy with you guys and, um, the, the way it's coming across to me is that they're trying to bring in abundance for you and that can be of many forms. But yeah, they're trying to bring in abundance for you but it's like you don't see it, recognize it, or no, you don't accept it. You, I don't think you, you mm, I think that something that you need to heal is how to receive because I don't think you know how to receive, not completely, not in the way that they want you to at this point. Hmm. I think some of you have been getting your sense of self-worth from soul connections or a soul connection in your life. Um, I think a soul connection in your life has also been helping you heal your shadow. Um, but I think there's something about that particular connection or just several connections in your life that still influence how you feel about yourself and that's where your guides come in all sassy <laughs> like why are you why are you still pulling your sense of value and sense of self and self-worth and self-esteem why are you pulling all of that from an external source why are you pulling all of that from an external party you know, who may or may not have seen your worth but what regardless of whether or not other people see your worth why are you still pulling it from those people when you're the empress? You're the empress, right? You're the empress and you don't need to pull your worth and your sense of self-worth from anyone else or anything else, even work. It comes from you and your ability to see your own progress and how far you've already come and how you've already, you know, you've already achieved so much. I think for some of you, you need to focus on what you've already achieved and stop looking at what you haven't achieved. I think you keep looking at, you know, what isn't in your life or what you haven't experienced yet and you've not spent enough time patting yourself on the back for what you've already had and what you've already gone through and what you've already built up for yourself in many ways. Whether it's within yourself, without yourself, it feels like you've already achieved so much, but yet you refuse to see it, or you refuse to see it as being enough. You refuse to see it as being, you know, it's like you're saying to yourself, you should be doing more right now. You should be doing more than this right now, or you should have more than this right now. You should be further along on your journey right now. And they're saying to you, why are you doing this to yourself? It's like, they're saying to you, stop stop because you've already done so well and you continue to do so well and you need to stop this comparison and you need to stop pulling your sense of self-worth from maybe how other people are doing in comparison to you or how other people treat you probably one or the other and instead 
recognize that you're on your own path you're on your own journey it's unique to you it doesn't need to be compared to anyone else and you've already you've already achieved so much and done so so many things right and so many things well and you need a minute to just stop and go yeah you know what I've done an amazing job I'm doing an amazing job sorry um I don't feel like you are doing that enough right now so what they want you to focus on is what you already have what you've already achieved how you've already grown who you are as a person, you know, just really, really give yourself some credit. I think that's what they want you to focus on right now. I think some of you dealt with a karmic partner at one point in your life and if it's not a karmic partner, it's a karmic cycle because we do have cycles here as well. And this karmic partner or karmic cycle made you feel very isolated, alone. Um, they made, they triggered maybe all parts of your shadow and your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, um, or a karmic cycle did. And you... It's really, really impacted how you see yourself in a negative way. And it may be something that you've worked through for a while. It may be something that you're only starting to work through now. Regardless, it's still impacting you. And it's because you're looking at the situation like that's where your value comes from or other people get to decide who you are as a person. Other people get to decide, you know, what you're capable of and your value and that's just simply not true it's just not true and that's why your guides are sassy because they're saying to you you are worth a hell of a lot more <laughs> you're worth a hell of a lot more than what you give yourself credit for and you need to start seeing that so you may start to get self-empowerment messages from your spirit team if you haven't already there's some unresolved issues and trauma from the past, I think, that's still impacting your well-being and how you view your sense of self. So I feel like you need to really pay attention to how you're communicating with yourself right now and how, you know, are you building yourself up or are you spending your time tearing yourself down? Because, you know, that's really important when it comes to how we feel within ourselves and how we move forward in our lives it's really going to dictate what happens going forward you know in terms of our own self-talk so really pay attention to that because I think that you're not recognizing I don't think you fully recognize your own potential or your own value and I think it's because you've had some difficult experiences before that okay I'm getting another message now wow okay so um for some of you, there's a karmic partner in your life that's actually, um, it may just be their presence or it may actually be, uh, oh God, right, okay, way too much now. Um, there may be a karmic partner in your life for some of you that their presence in your life, either their energy is blocking your abundance or literally there's something going on between you and a karmic partner where money is the issue or there's financial ties or there's a financial blockage as a result of again being around each other because that's the karma that's the karma that's the karma playing itself out um and i feel like for those of you where that's the case i feel like you will thrive when this karmic cycle has completed itself I feel like you'll notice areas of your life start to improve when this karmic cycle has ended because it won't be blocking your progress anymore. It won't be blo blocking your success anymore. <sighs> yeah, so I feel like 
this really is in relation to other people. I think there's just people in, in the mix here. It could be like family as well. It could be karma in, in fa family. <laughs> family just popped out as I said that. So yeah, it could be um, generational as well. So maybe there's something to do with, I think some of you are clearing out some stuff right now. Why do I feel like you're clearing out some stuff, resolving past issues and and closing out cycles and so that you can start over. I think once you close out this karmic loop or this karmic cycle that you may have been in for a while, you're gonna notice an increase in so many things. I think it's actually quite exciting in many ways because I think once you're over this hurdle, what's on the other side is the Empress, which is just, she is abundance, right? <laughs> she just is abundance. She's, um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be female, it's just, she what she represents it's that feeling of contentment running her own empire um i think okay now i'm getting something else some of you have um mother wounds so uh, some maternal figure in your life you may have had a damaging relationship with her and that's something that needs to heal potentially Potentially looking at your own relationship with your kids or looking at uh, your, um, if you've been putting off having kids, look to the relationship that you have with your mother because it might answer some of those questions. If you have kids, your relationship with your kids may be being affected by the relationship that you have with your maternal figure where there were some wounds that needed healing. There's definitely some generational patterns and cycles trying to close itself out right now. I think some of you may be really going through it in terms of clearing out karma. And so you may find that things are a bit hectic and a bit all over the place right now. Just understand that it's not gonna last. You just have to see things consciously, see things and experiences for what they really are, what they're trying to teach you, what they're trying to show you. Don't take it on face value, see through it, see see the, the deeper reasoning behind why it's playing out the way that it's playing out. What is it trying to show, you know, is something playing out in your life like it did in your family? Are you going through an experience that your parents went through when you were younger? You know, are you going through an experience that mirrors a relationship, another relationship that you've had in your life? This is, you know, all of this suggests that the reason for why this is happening is because you're trying to clear out some of your own wounds. You're trying to heal them by experiencing it again. Sometimes we have to be triggered and faced with something on repeat until we do things differently, until we can see that actually I've not healed that wound yet. And that's why I keep get, you know, getting drawn back into situations that mirror past experiences. But I feel like for some of you, this is this has been blocking your abundance which is why it's such a big problem because either there are family obligations that have, you know, you've got financial ties too and this is why financially you may have been struggling. But I think for most of you, this is energetic. It's almost like success. You haven't been able to achieve success because of the people you've been surrounding yourself with or the patterns that have been playing themselves out in your life. <sighs> So, okay, we've got summer. <laughs> Let's just fling itself out there. So something may shift in summertime for, um, or calm down in some kind of a way. You're gonna receive, okay, yeah. Yeah, some of you have been going through a dark night of the soul. Um, You've been going through, a let's just call it a big clear out. You've been going through a big clear out. I feel like summertime maybe when you receive some support or help for that, or you may uh, see the end of this cycle. That may maybe when this comes to a, a completion. Flying all over the place, your cards. Okay, so we have commitment here. It did fall out kind of upside down though. So maybe some of you, this could be that karmic partnership, right? And then we've got Muse and Twin Flame. So some of you, this is a Twin Flame journey, hence the em Empress being there as the... Uh... 
some of you, okay, some of you may be trying to, I'm going to talk about this very briefly in terms of masculine feminine energy. For those of you that resonate with the feminine energy, I feel like you are, you are working on yourself, you're healing, you are really just doing your own thing. For the masculine energy, I feel like he may be already in a commitment, maybe with a karmic partner. That cycle is trying to close itself out. And then what the reason behind that is because of the divine feminine for some reason, maybe to heal things with the divine feminine or uh, there will be an opportunity for that as a result of karmic completion, right? So just bear that in mind. So I'm gonna leave it there guys because I really could go on all day, but I really just, I feel like you need to understand that these cycles are closing themselves out right now and therefore it may feel a bit turbulent at times. Just allow things to happen the way that they're supposed to. Don't put too much pressure on yourself right now. Um, and understand that if you have been experiencing any uh, abundant blocks, then that will clear itself out when these karmic completions finish, when these karmic cycles or generational patterns really close out. So if you want to speed up the process, you know where to look, right? Look at these karmic partnerships, karmic cycles, generational patterns, look at those things learn about them, understand them so that you can heal them. And that should speed up the process to abundance and success. Okay. Okay. So I will leave it there. Um, I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I will speak to you soon. Bye.